Peace and blessings. Welcome back to the channel once again, where we talk all things health and healing from a holistic perspective, and today will be no different. Today, we're going to have sort of a taboo conversation, pun intended. Today, we're going to talk about what your boo-boo is saying about you, what your poop is saying about you and what's saying about your health in general. I think that's an important conversation because a lot of times we don't understand the language of the body. And sometimes the body is speaking to us, but we don't speak its language. So this is just another way I'm going to teach you how the body speaks to you so you can become that first sort of doctor of yourself. OK, because we rarely hear anybody go to the doctor and the doctor says, tell me about your your boo boo. You know, he may ask, do you have regular bowel movements? But he's not asking about the shape, the texture, the color, the amount, the smell. And I think it's important to know and understand all of those things are metrics to help you understand how you're doing in your digestive system, but also how you're doing in your overall health, because health comes through the gut. Disease begins in the gut, just like health begins in the, in the gut. So I think this is a very important conversation we need to have. Most importantly, because most people think this is a taboo conversation. Most people boo-boo in silence. Most people are boo-booing like they're ninjas, like they never want people to find out. There's a whole industry being created around, you know, fragrances and sprays, just to mask the smell of people's bowel movements, okay? People are literally having bowel movements so quickly, they turn around, flush, never take a look. Whereas me, I have a totally different perspective on it. Like, I celebrate my boo-boo. I mean, <laughs> sometimes I even brag on my boo-boo. Like, I have somebody go into the bathroom after me and go and check, and I ask them, well, hey, you smell that? And they're like, no, I don't smell anything. I'm like, exactly, exactly. So my perspective on bowel movements is totally different because I realize it's just another way to measure my health. And I'm constantly taking an opportunity to look at it, okay, to evaluate it, to see where I'm at, to see if I need more fiber in my diet, to see if I drink enough water, to see if the color is right, the texture is right. All of those things are very important, especially when you consider in the black and brown community, when you're looking at something like colorectal cancer, we probably get it 40% more of the time, and we're about two times more likely to die of colorectal cancer. So this is a very important topic. And as I said before, not only does health begin in the gut, but disease, disease begins in the gut too, okay? Quite often, how we create disease in our body, it starts in our gut. And so our gut is gonna be one of the first signs so this is why it's so important we have this conversation and you know and understand that if you can properly evaluate this, you can easily look back at what you ate that day. Now, let me be say this first. Most people are constipated. And when you look at the medical definition of constipation, it's less than three or four bowel movements in a week. That means less than one bowel movement a day. OK, that is not healthy. And I wanted to bring that up because the standards of health in the modern medicine systems are below standard. And most of them, the standards are created based on a sick population. Meaning if you look back at the standard back in the day, it's totally different from the standard today because we're getting more and more unhealthier. And so they move the bar down, okay, instead of up. The bar should be going up instead of down, but because we're getting sickier, sicker, and more unhealthier, they're moving the bar down and down and down. They do the same thing when it comes to the high blood pressure. Back in the days when you looked at high blood pressure, normal blood pressure will be less than 120 over 80, not less than 130 over 80, moving the bar down. All right. They do that with a lot. Of, they do that with diabetes. They do that with uh, a, a young lady's menses, like when a period start, they're thinking about moving the bar down. OK, it used to be 100 years ago. A girl could get her period at 15 or 16 years old. OK, today they're saying 11 or 12. They're about to move that bar down to like eight years old because so many girls are getting their periods at eight years old now. 
because we're getting more and more unhealthier. So it's important to know and understand some of the standards that they create in modern medicine are based on a sick population because we don't have health care, we have sick care. All right, so I'm going to give you an idea at the end of what a healthy stool should look like. But before that, I do that, I want to give you eight things. Eight things that your poop is saying about you. Okay? Eight things that your poop is saying about you. All right? Now, first things first. It's important to know that the large uh, intestine is about three inches wide. Okay? Three inches wide. Okay? So guess what? Your bowel movement should be somewhere in between two and three inches wide. Okay? Now, why is that important? Because when you have a thin poop, these pencil-like poops, what is that saying about you? It's saying that you're tonal eliminating. And what I mean by tonal eliminating, most people have between 10 and 25 pounds of undigested fecal matter sitting, rotting, festering inside of their gut. If we were to take out your large, your large intestine, matter of fact, if we were to take out your entire digestive system, it would be somewhere between 25 and 30 feet long. 25 and 30 feet long, all right? So it's important to know and understand when you're having this bowel movement, at the point that you're having the bowel movement, the opening is about three inches wide. So when you're getting those pencil-like poops, really thin poops, what it's saying is that you're tunnel eliminating, meaning that three inch opening is becoming more and more narrow, okay? That means your digestive system is getting unhealthy, Okay, but it could also mean that some of that waste matter is caking up on the inside, making that opening smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay, so a lot of people will tell me, hey, I have bowel movements every day. I'm good. But if you're having bowel movements that are really thin, it means that you're really not having a full bowel movement, which means that you have an unhealthy digestive system. Okay, so that's one thing that your bowel movements or your poop could be telling you, all right? Those thin bowel movements mean that you're probably tunnel eliminating, all right? Number two, if the stool just so happened to be gray or whitish in color, it means that there's not enough bile in the poop, which means that this could be affecting your gallbladder, your liver, or your pancreas, okay? which are play vital roles in your overall digestive health. And so when you start to get those gray or white, whitish stools, that is a sign that something's going on. And in most cases, something going on with your gallbladder, your liver, or your pancreas. And I'll tell you, we're having so many issues with those three uh, organs, glands, okay? So many issues, pancreatitis, uh, fatty liver disease through the roof now, okay? Gallbladder sur surgery removal is the number one elective surgery in the world. So it's telling you we're doing something majorly wrong in our diet, okay? But whenever you see gray, whitish stools or poops, usually that's what it's an indication of. You need to go see your doctor, all right? Number three, black or tarry stools. When your stools, not brown, but black tar-like, then this is a big issue, okay? It could be a small issue in that you're taking iron supplements. A lot of times, iron supplements will cause you to have black or tarry stools. But in the worst case, in many cases, it also could mean that there's blood in the stool, and that blood is what turns that stool black or tarry, okay? It could also be old blood as well, too. All right, so whenever your stools become black and consistently black, that is a sign that you have possible blood in the stool, okay? Which is could be coming from, you know, a bleed in the, somewhere in the digestive system. Majorly important. That's something you definitely want to see your doctor about, especially if you're, in, you're not taking any, like, iron supplements, okay? Number four, floaters, okay? Floaters. Floaters are when you poop, and instead of the poop dropping and sinking, it floats, okay? So when it sinks, that's actually a good poop. It's supposed to sink. 
But when it floats, when you get the floaters, a lot of times what they're saying is it's a fatty stool. Okay, especially if you've been eating a lot of fatty meals, a lot of meals with a lot of fat in them, a lot of meals with a lot of meat that has a lot of saturated fat as well, too. That also could be the reason, but it also could be because you're you're experiencing what's called malabsorption, meaning you're not absorbing their, your nutrients properly. And as a result, the stools are becoming fatty. OK, so that's also an issue. Again, if you consistently see this, if you see it every now and again, it's probably due to the meal that you ate that day. But if you see it all the time then it could be as a result of malabsorption, but it also could be an issue with your gallbladder, okay? All right, so hugely important, all right? Number five, foul-smelling poos. You know those kind of poos when you walk in and it hits you and you got to get out of there? Like the kind of poos where it says, hey, they got to put a sign on the door, you can't go in there 30 to 45 minutes. When it smells that bad, like you can't be in a room, like you don't want to be in a room with yourself, then that is an issue. Now, uh, <laughs> most people are under the impression that everybody's poo is supposed to stink, okay? When you have a truly healthy digestive system, um, there's very little smell at all. OK, and one one crucial part of having a healthy digestive system is that the food, when you eat it in three to four hours, it goes out of the system. See, most people don't have a bowel movement within three hours of eating. And so what happens is the food sits there, it rots, it ferments, because think about it. The temperature in the body is like 98 degrees. And if you put anything in a dark space with moisture at a temperature of 98 degrees, it's gonna rot and fester and have a smell. Whereas if you put it in that space for a short period of time, there won't be any smell. So a lot of people are having very slow transit times when it comes to their digestive system. And as a result, they could have very foul smelling bowel movements. A lot of the times when you're having that bowel movement, it's not the food you just ate, okay? A lot of that bowel movement is old food as well, too. All right. And if it's not that, it could be a bacterial or a viral infection. OK, whenever you have a bacterial or viral infection, that also could cause a, a foul smelling bowel movement. Parasites in the gut, which I've talked about at length. And this is why I tell you it's so important to actually do my detox as consistently as possible every three to four months. OK because a lot of people have parasites, a lot of people have viruses and, and bad bacteria in their gut that they need to get rid of as well too. But it also could be because of certain meds that could cause your bowel movements to be foul smelling. And it also could be because you either have a gluten intolerance or you have celiac disease, okay? So those are some typical reasons why you could have the kind of poop that can make somebody pass out, <laughs> okay? Now, that's number five. What I want to do real quickly is give you a little bit of information. I have a retreat coming up in Florida. I do every year with my Tribe Healing Membership Program. Now, I want to invite you out. That's why I'm doing it in the middle of this video. I want to invite you out. We have about 30 seats left. Would love for you to join us at Tribe Healing Retreat. I'll put the link in the bio. During the retreat, we do things like yoga. We do learning sessions where I teach you things about how to heal from heartbreak. I'll have a speaker come in and talk about that. The amazing April Mason, who you saw in one of my Heal My People videos. Uh, I'll be talking to you about healing hormones, okay, both in men and women. We'll be also talking about how to heal holistically, how to heal your mindset, a whole host of other topics as well, too, and a few other speakers. We'll also do a farm tour where you'll go to my tropical fruit farm and you'll get to see how we grow things there. So I'll also be teaching you a little bit about how to grow your own food and why it's important to start to do that. And then we're also going to have uh, lunch on the farm as well, too. All right. You'll be able to buy fruit, all those type of things. So. Tribe Healing Retreat 2024 will be in Miami. It's going to be a time for healing. 
recuperation, recalibration, and finding our higher selves. And we're going to be doing that together. And we'd love to have you come there. So I'll put the link below. So for those who actually stay tuned in with me, you'll be able to go below and check that out as well, too. So shout out to you for watching this entire video. Now, I got three more left. Three more things that your poop is saying about you. All right. So the last one we left off with was foul smelling poop. All right. The next one is the pebble poop. The pebble poop, when it comes out in like little marbles, when it comes out in like little marbles, quite often what that means is you don't have enough fiber in your diet or water or both. Okay. Whenever you're getting those little pebble poops, it's either a sign of a lack of fiber and water or constipation. All right. In any case, not a good thing. To have a bowel movement, you must have fiber, you must have water because 70% of a bowel movement is fiber and water, okay? So when they're absent, this is why you get those little pebbles, okay? So that's what it's saying about you, all right? You need to get more fiber and more water in your diet, all right? Number seven, the green poop. The green poop is actually a good poop. Typically, what it means is you've eaten, eaten some sort of green leafy vegetables, uh, whether it be arugula, kale, dandelion leaves, whatever it is you're eating. Typically, that's what it means. You've been eating something green and now it's in your stool. So typically, that's a good poop. Nothing to worry about. All right. And then the final one is the mushy poop. OK, not quite diarrhea, but mushy. OK. Typically, that could happen for a number of reasons. You're eating some very processed food, okay, and your body doesn't know what to do with it. Uh, or it also could be mean that you ate some dairy. Dairy would tend to make your, po your poop kind of mushy, all right? And then also when you're stressed. When you're stressed, what it does is increase the transit time of your digestion and the food just pass right through. And it doesn't grab a lot of the fiber. And as a result, you get that mushy poop. And the last resort could be because you have some sort of infection when you have that mushy poop. But the mushy poop means that you're probably on the way to diarrhea. Okay. And so it's really important to understand that no matter what your poop, you know, how it comes out, you should be taking a look back before you make that royal flush to look at the color to look at the shape, to look at the texture, to look at the amount, and to check out the smell, okay? That's you doing your due diligence for yourself, all right? So I hope this has been helpful. Um, and the next time you take a poop, don't think about me, but think about what you need to do in terms of to evaluate how well you're eating, how well your digestive system is processing the food that you're eating so that you can be abreast to when something is wrong. You don't want to wait until something's wrong where you're going to get a diagnosis. You want to be able to get in front of it so that you can be preventative because that's what this is all about. We don't want to get to, to dis-ease. We want to stay in front of it with prevention. And like I always say, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cures. So if you focus on prevention, you never have to find a cure. All right. Hugely important. Now, as always, please hit that subscribe button. When you hit the subscribe button, it helps me do better with this content. As you hit that subscribe button, YouTube rewards me and helps me be able to create better content here. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, share this video with everybody out there because everybody has a poop and hit that bell up top as well too. So you'll get notifications when great videos like this come out in the future. Until the next time, Peace and blessing and Godspeed and for everybody who's coming to my retreat on June 6th through June 9th in Miami. Can't wait to see you there. Until the next time, peace and blessings.